What is good? Hello, hello. It is good to see you. Seriously though, what is good? We don't often ask that question, but it's a great one. What is good? Let me know in the comments below. I am going to be sharing with you today about my coaching journey. This is something that I've been getting a lot of questions about and I love it actually. So I am happy to share. I'm somewhat surprised to share. I don't often and I'm not often led to share on this, so I believe that it's timely and relevant for, for many of you, so I'm happy to get on here. And if at any point there are questions that are still burning inside of you that I have not answered, you can visit julianapage.com and there's a contact page where you can literally pick from a drop down menu the things that you want to connect with me for, even if it's just a question that I didn't answer here. So that's the best way to get those answered, so just jot that down, julianapage.com. Write your questions over there on the side if I don't get to those, and I will be sure to get back to you. And a little bio, I guess, just to kind of start here. I am somebody that literally had been a personal development, self-help junkie. I think one of my very first books in that space was the Chicken Soup for the Soul book. <laughs> this was after a time in my season. I must have been like 10. I think it was 10 and I was on a flight somewhere and I just needed some sort of material to read. And at the time I did not like reading, like you read books because you had to, not because you enjoyed it. Right. Or it was bedtime and you had to have a book read to you. Right. So I was not super amped about this, but I read this book and it was like, poof, I just felt instantly like there were, cause this was before social media also. So keep that in mind. But I felt instantly like there were so many people around the world that had stories that were as wild <laughs> and tumultuous and upsetting and just scary at times and painful and just unsettling. And that I was not weird. I was not random. I was not alone. And I literally read that entire book so fast and then I found out that there were so many more of them but I think after that it really just lit something up in me like okay there must be a reason that all of these things happened in my life and that I am being put on this path and I don't take that lightly right and so I had been on after that point from 10 and this is when I found out that I was adopted and essentially in my life I have many sets of parents, but none of them were the parents that I needed. And I didn't have the champion, the cheerleader, the one that was invested in helping me develop and evolve as a human. I didn't come from a legacy of faith. I came from religion and life was just hard. There was a lot of dysfunction. There was a lot of things that were unaddressed. There was a lot of healing that folks did not pursue on their own. So there was just a lot of chaos and confusion that was just floating through my life from a very young age. And I think up to a certain point, I used athletics or academics or ways to excel to channel what I couldn't control. And then it was later in my college years that it really became very difficult to navigate in the world because I literally couldn't answer questions like, who am I? Why am I here and what the heck am I going to do with my life? Because I keep seeing things that don't work and I keep seeing so much fear and it looks like bondage and that can't be my story. Like, I don't know how I'm going to find it, but I'm going to find another way. So from reading that very first self-help book and being like, wow, like people have lives like me, right? I'm not alone to literally having this desire to continue to grow and to learn and evolve. I just had this voracious hunger, right? That I, I couldn't, I literally could not alleviate, right? Like I was just so hungry to grow and it was just very interesting. I would just, because of that, also found that I had a tendency to be more mature. Like I just grew up really fast and it made it hard to just have fun and enjoy my life. So at any rate, I was somebody that was always looking for how to grow, how to change myself, how, how to become better in some kind of way, how to fix what is not working in my life. Like I was going to find it. I was going to figure it out. And a lot of that was a revolving around what I'm going to do in the world. What am I going to do in the world? Who am I? What am I going to do? How's this going to happen? Right? So I was consumed by this. So I literally invested a ton of time, energy, resource into my education. 
I have an undergraduate degree in journalism because I was really interested in what journalism was started for. <laughs> like if you actually go into the history of journalism, it was all about storytelling and literally capturing a very compelling narrative. And a lot of them were just true to life stories that actually happened in the world. And it was about informing the public good, right? So I was super intrigued by that. But then the more and more that I was in positions, whether it was in radio or whether it was with magazines, I was not prepared for the culture, for the demands of the job, for the work environment, just for all of the activity that was operating in that realm. I wasn't prepared for it, but I, I was also confused because I knew that I was drawn to it. So fast forward, I went to graduate school for film production to literally build on my love for flipping narratives, right? From, and which also comes from my own story. Like how do you take a mess and turn that into your message or all of these tests and turn it into a testimony or all of this pain and turn it into power? Like how do you do it? But all I knew was that people in film seem to have figured it out, right? <laughs> And those those were some of my mentors, whether it was books or whether it was in film. If I wasn't getting that from, from parents or from God at the time, right, where was I going to find it, right? So I was really chasing after a lot of these industries that were going to help me discover and explore and uncover how to change my own narrative, right, and then help other people to do the same. So in film school, this was like the best psychology, sociology, I don't even know, but it was like seven degrees in one. <laughs> it was the most probably challenging time of my life. And it was nothing like college. It was like three times more difficult than that. And I was working at the time and volunteering in the film industry as well. So it was insanity, right? So in the middle of this is when I found coaching, okay, which is why this is really, really important. So I was at, this was in Beverly Hills, and I didn't exactly know why I was there. It was early in the morning, like 6 a.m., so that was across town for me. And if you have to drive on the 4 or 5, there's this running joke that you're going to be on there for like 4 or 5 hours. So I am going to this film event, and I don't know why I'm there. And they do this thing, which to an introvert was like the most uncomfortable thing, where they're passing around a microphone, and they're telling you to say who you are, <laughs> why you're there, um, and what you hope to get out of the, the meeting. And I'm like, oh, it's too early for this. And these are like my pain points right now, right? So I remember some woman stood up though, and she said her name, and she said that she is an entertainment coach, coaching high achieving women in the industry. And I was like, what in the world did you just say? But like, I am your target market. So I need to at least connect with her. So there was some benefit in people going around and doing that. And I did, I ended up getting this woman's business card and we set up a discovery call or an initial consult. People call them different things. And I remember being so nervous. Like my heart was beating out of my chest. I'm like, oh my God. Um, and so I am at a beach in California I think at the time this was, it wasn't Santa Monica, Redondo. No, it was Hermosa. <laughs> all of those on the one, right? Let me just name them all. So I am sitting on the beach beneath the Hermosa Beach Pier, getting ready to take this call. I have like my journal and I'm so nervous and excited at the same time because I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just ready for somebody to be excited to invest in my development, which is like heartbreaking, but also so, so powerful, right? We, we need people like that. So I'm sitting on this beach and I'm getting this call from her and she starts asking me these questions that had been like deeply buried into my soul. Like I literally was just running from answering these. I didn't want to face all of these fears, all these questions, all these things that I didn't feel like I had answers to. I just wanted to keep working, keep grinding, keep pushing, keep figuring it out, leaning on my own understanding, leaning on my own strength and just like, oh, right, just grinding. So she's asking me these questions and something is happening in me where I am thinking all the things in my head. I'm like, okay, I don't have the answers to these. I 
have never had anybody ever even ask me these. Like I've asked myself them, but I've never even like been still enough to answer them. And I am actually aware <laughs> that this is going to lead to her telling me how much it is to work with her, which is scary. But the scary, nearly terrifying thing of that whole experience was I am so afraid of what's going to happen to me and my life story, right? My book of destiny, if you will, if I don't answer these questions, if I don't get still, if I don't start actually doing this inner work, I am more afraid of what's going to happen to me if I don't, right? Because I know that avoiding, running, being busy, channeling things into these other healthy means, whether that's, you know, athletics or overworking or whatever it might be, those are only temporary fixes, <laughs> right? So I really needed to start answering these questions. And so long story short, I figured out that I was going to take all the monies <laughs> that I was using to live and figure out how to work with her. And as I was starting to work with her, I really was in the space of like, I am paying you to do what I've been practicing my entire life without even recognizing that this is an actual industry, <laughs> right? Like, this is weird to me. How am I paying you for this thing that is an actual industry, right? This is mind boggling to me. So I started getting really curious about how do I do that? Because that that's really what I then thought I was going to do. I was getting this vision to be coaching folks in film. <laughs> because if you can imagine, there's a lot of folks that are in film and media, right, that have a lot of creativity, but you need to root and ground that into strategy and planning and organization and consistency and so many other things. So I really believe that I was going to merge with those people because I found an industry that I loved, but I didn't want to necessarily be, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily wanting to be any one of those parts, whether it was a director or a cinematographer or a gaffer or an actress or an assistant director. Like I wasn't really wanting to be all those parts, although I love them. My, my most favorite thing about being in a production was being an assistant director or a director and literally positioning people where they were destined to be, to flourish, right? Like that's my favorite thing. And so I kind of do that in life. <laughs> so at any rate, that's what I thought I was going to do. And I really had the most difficult time trying to make this decision. Like I wrestled with it and wrestled with it and wrestled with it. And at the same time, I kept see, saying to myself, I need a break. I just need a break. Like I just, this is too much to handle. Like I was literally on, I was in the middle of my thesis film shoot. I was working full time. <laughs> I was taking classes. I was also volunteering, right? And, and interning in the industry. So I was exhausted. I was exhausted, right? And that was somewhat new because I am somebody that always had really good self-care practices. So it was bizarre. It was just a very interesting time. And so I'm on my thesis film shoot and this is the story that I promised I would share. And I had folks ask me, we literally are about to like wrap up my thesis film shoot. We have one more location. There's an exterior shot that we need to get. There's no actors involved. It's just a pan shot of a house, right? And that is it. The, all of the shooting is done and we're going to move into post, right? So somebody asked me as we're kind of, you know, having craft services and hanging out and just kind of eating and chilling, Will you do a round up back handspring, right? These were things that I would do on the beach. I was a former gymnast, so I'd run it. I'd do back handspring and just have a good time. It's kind of like riding a bike in a sense, right? Like when you know how to do it, your body just follows you. So I'm like, oh my goodness, that would be the perfect emotional release right now. Like my brain is literally putting that together, right? And nobody stopped me. And I definitely just ignored that thought. And so I ran and I did this round up back handspring and I just remember when I'm pushing off the ground to do the back handspring, I just heard, it was like a matrix-like moment where things just like slowed down, where it's like, you know? And I just heard, this is the break that you need. And I was like, what in the world? And I'm pushing off the ground, hearing this, and I have no idea what's happening. Like if anybody else heard that, like it was an audible voice, right? So I finished doing this, Everybody's looking at me like I guess they were satisfied with that. <laughs> and I'm just like, what just happened? Like I literally could not grasp it. And I just sat down for a second 
I'm like, this is the break that I need. What does that even mean? And then I just started looking at my hands and literally in this moment, just to cut the story short, I broke both radial bones in my wrists by doing this roundup back handspring. Insane, right? It was just like, I was, you know, sick at the time. I was exhausted. I was in jeans and a hoodie. The ground was frozen. It was the right speed, the wrong angle. <laughs> just so many things that like factored into that happening. But it was the break that I needed. And somehow, because I had heard that audible, I knew that it was going to be okay. But it was a very painful setup to me having to slow down and start facing some really deep decisions in my life. And ultimately, one of those was to decide to invest in life coaching and life coach certification and training, right? In the middle of grad school, which I already felt like, man, this is my second investment. This will be my third investment that I don't feel like I'm going to get the return on investment on. Like, what am I doing? Right? It just felt so crazy. But that's also often how God works. Sometimes we go into something thinking it's going to be one way and he wants us to go in for something completely different than we expected or anticipated. So I end up making this difficult decision difficult because of the investments that I made and stepping into something that felt scary and new and that wasn't a legitimized profession like that wasn't cool and trending and like what people do today right it was something that was a huge risk at the time for me and my risk tolerance felt like super low hence why I broke two radial bones to make a decision right which is not how I recommend anybody having to get to a point of decision it shouldn't be a breaking point all right side rant <laughs> so at any rate I decided to go through life training, life training, life training, life coach certification school. And I did this, this must have been in 2000, 2008, right? So I did that. I got certified. I even went to their graduate level of the training as well. And this was insane. Like I started, I was the first person done with my film. I, you know, really started showing up differently in my environment. I started carrying myself differently. I was just alive on a whole new level, even though I had broken bones, it was wild, right? And so even as I'm rehabilitating <laughs> and even just trying to learn things like drive my car again, scary as all get out, particularly in LA. But as I'm going through this process, it was the best time of my life. Like I was so amped, I was alive. I have never felt like that in my entire life. It literally was like I struck gold. I found what I was here to do, finally, OMG, right? So now I had to face this really interesting decision of now what? Because I really recognized that the initial idea that I had to coach folks in the film industry was not something that I was strong enough to do at the point. I didn't really recognize why, which I'll get to, but I didn't have like the inner fortitude to, to handle that or to hold enough belief for these folks yet. So I was really wondering and curious about like what next one am I going to do and I was led definitely by God still wasn't walking with God but definitely by God to move across the country so that I could launch the coaching practice and also live my life and just find out things that I enjoy doing because the former season was just there was no play <laughs> and I need play in my life right like I do have this very joyful nature joy is is how I'm wired. It's also a third of the kingdom. So it's important to God. But Juliana Page actually means joyful messenger or youthful servant. So it just, it kind of makes sense that if you cut off joy, and if I can't activate my joy, I'm in big trouble, right? And it's where strength comes from. So through, through all the hard joy is how you can, whether it's laughter, whether it's play, whether it's creativity, that's how you can like literally release all of that anxiety and fear and these things that we sometimes hold on to when we're triggered, right? So I move across the country, I launched my coaching practice and a few years, a few years into it, I just heard, and this was God again, that I need to kill it. Just kill it. Just, you know, <laughs> let it go. Just, just like that. And I literally had nowhere to put that. I didn't know I'm somebody that likes to have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Like I just, if there's only plan A, like, and plan A is not it, what do you do, right? I just was not prepared 
for that to happen. But I knew at that point that if I didn't listen to that voice, even though I didn't identify that voice as Holy Spirit and the voice of God, I knew that if I didn't listen, life was going to get really hard for me and things that I was going to do were not going to work. Like if you build it in your own strength, you have to maintain it in your own strength. So I inherently knew that, but I didn't know what that meant or why. I didn't know the why, but it was more so the lesson was, are you willing? (laughs) This thing that I gave you, this thing that you love, this thing that you are gifted in, are you willing to surrender it? Surrender your Isaac, right? It's definitely like that story. Are you willing to do that? And so that was a huge test. And I did, I laid it down. And after that, which is really humbling, I went into corporate America and started training and coaching. And then I moved into the nonprofit space. And it was in that time where I literally had this crazy encounter with God and just surrendered my life to God. I was in a really difficult time in my life and just didn't have really strong, healthy relationships and community around me. And I just was tired. I was tired trying to figure things out. I was tired of starting over. I was tired of having to be so strong in my own strength. I was tired of just navigating and trying to figure it all out. And I just couldn't do it. Like there has to be more. There's got to be a better way, right? Like it's not supposed to be this hard and I don't want to feel disconnected or isolated and I want to have the right people in my life and I want to be able to discern if they're right or not. I don't want to have to go down that path only to waste time, energy, emotion, heart, you know, heartbreaks really take a long time to recover from or they can, right? It's not always the case, but they can, right? And so I just didn't want to set myself up for failure, but I didn't have, you know, that again, that fathering, that nurturing, that guidance. And I was so hungry for that. Literally what I wanted more than anything was discernment. (laughs) I was like, turn up my discernment. Yes and amen, right? And so God completely flipped my world upside down. I thought it was going to get, you know, easier, more fluid. No, it got hot, spicy, fiery furnace type stuff. And I, oh my goodness, it was It was crazy. And so I started serving in a recovery ministry and walking with people for a year of their life through really deep stuff, um, really to overcome any hurt, any habit, any hang up that they have. Then I was led into prophetic ministry and into ministry school. And I already had a couple of ministry certifications at that time. Um, It was just really had a coach in the church was one of the certifications. I had just a couple of different ministry certifications. And so then I went to supernatural ministry school to really learn more about the kingdom um, and started traveling to different conferences just so I could learn more and, and really just expose myself to these tools and resources that God was really putting on my heart to grow and develop in. And then I started writing books which is never part of the plan (laughs) that I thought was going to feel like punishment, but it's just something where God's anointing fell and something that I was faithful to do. And God, in short, gave me new tools, new language. He gave me a grid for everything that I didn't have and not having a legacy of faith handed down to me. Um, And it blew my mind. Like he started accelerating my journey in him and my growth journey and my maturity in Christ. And I just started getting so many downloads and wisdom and revelation and prophetic words that God was walking me out and and really walking me through some, some really deep and dark stuff, right? Like again, life didn't get easier and I just had a different way of fighting and showing up in the world. And I started to be led by God and it literally was the best thing. And in answer to that one question, if you could give somebody one thing, right? Like if you were to leave the earth and you could give somebody one thing, what would you give them? It would be to be led by God, to be able to have a spirit led life where it's not your own thoughts, your own motives, your own hustle and muscle, but it's literally really learning how to align yourself with God and his word and his truth and his heart and his character and his presence and and what's on his heart for this season and what is he leading you to do and has he he affirmed that in his word and how you can hear his voice for yourself and how you can really just live in his presence every day and be guided 
every single day and supported every day and provided for every day, you just literally become an entirely new person. You are a new creation and it's something that has brought me so much joy. It's just really woke me up to my true nature. And so in short, I went from the self-mastery, self-help, inner work, I'm going to fix myself to like, I straight up can't fix myself. And like, if you could help and do the heavy lifting, that'd be great. And God does, which is so, so awesome. So God does the work in us, right? And he meets us where we're at. And then he takes us on a journey and he takes us on a process and he uses our willingness and our, our obedience to walk it out one day at a time, one moment at a time, one step at a time. So what I do now, I am, of course, a master certified life coach. But what I decided to do, because I was led to do this, was that I was going to make God the foundation of my business, right? God's work is what I want to do. I want to point people to God. I want to guide them in having a relationship with God. I want to help them in being led by God so they can truly bring heaven's influence through whatever they're called to do on earth and to their sphere of influence, right? So that has turned into working with executive directors, working with CEOs, working with entrepreneurs, working with people just like me, a simple human just like me that, that want to grow with God. So I literally help people live a spirit-led life. And God's Vibes Matter is just a very quick, fun story. I My initial coaching practice was called Vibes Matter, like how you think affects how you feel, which affects how you show up in the world. It's literally your behavior is all driven from that. And so I joke that I got self-checked by God. It was just like, Hugh! like, we're going to pull you back because to tie up the loose ends on that story, he <laughs> is who I want to point people to. I don't want to point them to self-help. I don't want to point them to the very things that continue to have me searching God wanted to stop the search so I could seek the source. And so that's what I help people do as well. Whether they are seeking, 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 they just need to stop and they need to seek God or whether they're hustling and grinding and they just need to be led by grace. I help people recognize by personal experience and point them to the source, right? Through this mantra, God's vibes matter, right? Not every vibe does. Not everyone is even worthy of your attention and of your focus and you being able to really test the spirits and know what they're of and hear from God for yourself and receive prophetic words and test the words and prove them, right? And study the word to show yourself approved. All of that changes your life. It changes your business. It changes your relationships. It changes your family. And so I, yes, help people through the form and the vehicle of life coaching, but I do it with God, meaning there could be sozo, there could be prophetic, there could be truth and wisdom from the word of God, but I incorporate that all into how I coach and how I work with people. And one of the things that I am launching here, I have a wait list up now for is the God's Vibes Mastermind. And I am so excited about this. This is something that God put on my heart. And essentially the books that I've written, whether it is Reclaiming Your Spiritual Authority, Co-Laboring with God, uh, ruling and reigning in life or stepping into royalty, all of that, I've turned that into course content and I am coaching in a group format, which is beautiful, 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 because there's so much power in testimony, right? We're transformed by the power of testimonies. It's so, so true. And so there's something to be said about growing and developing in community with like-minded, like-hearted people that are hungry, but hungry for God, right? And that really want to be on this experience together. So I have a six-month God's Vibes Mastermind. It is launching in October. So I've, I've got it all set up. So that's something that you will see more of here. But you can apply for it now. There's a link for it in my bio. But essentially, you'll get access to all of the courses. All right? And then there are weekly lives and weekly coaching where you can get on and get coached. And then there's also homework as well that you can be applying throughout to really help you in all those different areas, whether that is launching a business, whether that's just growing in your personal relationship with God, whether that's learning more about the prophetic, we cover all sorts of territory. So it's really great whether you are a mature believer, if you identify as that, if you identify as a baby believer, <laughs> wherever you're at in the journey, it's so good to be challenged in that way and constantly be growing 
and, and really testing yourself and studying and maturing and fasting and praying. So we have a private community where you can grow and where you can do that. So stay on the lookout. If you do want to learn more about coaching, I'm happy to answer those questions. I, I do believe that being certified and really learning the skills of coaching was really important to be able to hold space for people, to be under, to be able to hold yourself to a code of ethics and morals, to be able to really just care for people well. It's not therapy, but it, it should still be treated as, as something that is definitely professional. So I believe that the certification route was for me, but you need to pray if you are led to coach to really be led and guided into what that looks like for you. I know that for me, it's been through many renditions, whether it was personal life coaching, right, which I found was not what I was ultimately led to do, painfully so, but God brought it back around in a way that I didn't expect. I Whether that's corporate coaching, whether that's in the nonprofit space, I've, I've really been in all of them. And now that I specifically focus on this mastermind and then also working with private clients as well. So if you want to know more, feel free to ask, to ask away. I am an open book as far as that concerns. And I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. I thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to sharing all these beautiful things with you. All right, guys, until next time, stay blessed.